Hey guys, welcome back to Crazy TV. So happy October. So to celebrate the spooky October month, I'm going to be doing two videos a week for the month of October, bringing you guys the best spooky, paranormal, crime, everything October related. So if you guys like that, give this video a thumbs up so I know that you guys want to see a spooky content for this month. Now before we get started, I just want to show off, you guys look at this ring. Yes, this is the constellation ring and a necklace. So I don't know how many of you guys like to follow the star signs and things like that, but you guys, I am a Gemini. This ring is so beautiful. I also got the matching necklace. So if you guys love star signs and following that, why don't we be matching? Starting from today, I'm going to be linking down everything I am wearing below. So today is the most requested crime video, and that is the Pa Song serial killer. This is known to be one of the most notorious cases in South Korea, even till this today. This happened back in 1986 till 1991. So for years, especially the Pasong city area has been tormented by this mysterious killer that it was on loose. So there is known to be at least 10 victims in total and or more. There's a famous movie called Memories of Murder. This was also one of the movies that sparked the interest of the nation again once this movie came out. Especially these movies, if they go hit and viral, sometimes these cases are reopened again. So these kind of movies are very important. The Pasong murder was an infamous case because there was a string of murders with the modus operandi, which means this murderer had a particular way he killed his victims. Now, where these murders took place, it was actually a very rural farmy area. So not to mention the fact that back then we didn't have CCTVs, we didn't have a lot of witnesses. Therefore, it was very dark in the streets. I mean, there's not a lot of people out in the farming area, you know, when it's laid out. First murder victim was in September 15th, 1986. A woman in her 70s, she was actually 71 years old, Miss E. Wan Im was murdered. There is no one common age in the victims, so the victims are 14 years all the way up to 70 years of age. So the suspect would usually take action at night when the females would be walking alone in secluded areas. So the second crime happened about three weeks later in October 20th, Miss Park Hyun Suk, who was only 25 years old. Third victim, December 12th, Kwon Jung Pan, she was 25 years old. Fourth victim, December 14th, Lee Kesuk, she was 23 years old. She worked at a factory. She was coming home late at night. She was walking alone, and that is when she was killed. Fifth murder happened in January 10th, 1987. Miss Hong Jin Young, she was only 19 years old. Sixth victim, May 2nd, Park Eun Ju, 29 years old. Seventh victim, 1988, September 7th, An Ki Sun, and she was 54 years old. The next victim, September 16th, 1988, Park Sang Hye. She was 14 years old. The next victim, November 15th, 1990, Kim Bi Tong. She was also 14 years old. She was a junior high student who got off the bus stop. She was walking home with a friend. Just to let you guys know, these rural areas, the bus stop and your house is kind of far away. So people usually have to walk even a mile or a little bit more just to get back home. The next and the last victim that is known to have been killed with the, by the same murderer, April 3rd, 1991. Her name was Kwan Sang, and she was 60 three years old. I told you guys this was an infamous case because of the modus operandi and the most important infamous thing about this case was that they were all gagged with their own clothes. They had their own underwear garments that was wrapped around their heads or you know tied to their feet and their hands. So the fact that all the victims were killed in the same exact gruesome way, this just put chills down the nation. I mean people were so scared and so afraid to go out at night just because of this murderer. The crazy thing is they went through about 1.8 police officers just to find the suspect and they weren't able to find the suspects at all. There wasn't a great DNA technology in South Korea back in 1980s therefore there was really no way to capture the suspect even if you did have the suspect's DNA in storage. Now there was a popular theory revolving this suspect and this will put chills down your spine. The theory was that the killing was taking place in rainy nights and someone was requesting the same song on the radio before the murder took place. If this was the guy that was requesting the radio, the song would probably have triggered something in his childhood memory that made him act this way. So I'm not sure if this is entirely 100% true or not, but someone requested the same song 
on all these 10 nights that this murder took place. Now the crazy thing is apparently the killing seemed to have stopped in 1991. So it went quiet after then and unfortunately the case went cold. Now a lot of psychologists say these psychopath killers usually don't just stop. So something had to happen to him that made him stop in 1991. People thought he might be dead, he just might be jailed for a different crime, he might be in a mental hospital, or he might have moved out of the country or just to another city. Now let's take a look at the evidence that we have. Back when the crime was happening, there was a bus driver that claims he saw the suspect. Now the bus driver said the man was wet, he had dirty shoes, he was acting very rude. He was telling the bus driver, let's go, let's go, let's hurry up. He even asked the bus driver for some cigarette light. Now I didn't know this, but back in 1980s and 1990s, they had a bus helper. So that was also someone along with the driver that would help, you know, guide inside the bus. And that is when they were able to describe what the suspect looked like. So this is the picture back in 1980s and early 1990s that they put out on the news of how the possible suspect could look like. So they described him as someone with a skinny face. He could have been somewhere around mid 20s to early 30s. He was around 165 to 175 centimeters, but no double eyelid and slit eyes. They described the suspect to possibly have a blood B type. So later this came out to be false that blood types really don't matter when it comes to finding the suspect. Unfortunately, you guys, the case was closed in 2006 after the statute of limitation was reached. So in Korea, crimes usually only have 15 years of statute of limitation. So after that, you know, cases are closed. Even if the suspect is found 15 years later, he or she cannot be prosecuted. Crazy, right? I know. So one good news is DNA test is now available and we can find any suspect even if by any evidence that was stored years ago. So we could even test things years back, especially rape and murder cases. The DNA of the suspect is stored. Now they're being tested. So recently they tested the DNA of the Hwasong killer. Now there was some male DNA evidence that was left in the victim's underwear. So they got those DNA evidence, they tested it, and guess what? They found a match. So the man is revealed to be someone named Yi Tun Jae. And the crazy thing is he is already serving a life sentence for killing his sister-in-law back in 1994. The killing of his sister-in-law back in 1994 was a big case on its own and no one knew he was a suspect of the Hwa Sung murder. So he's currently known to be 56 years old and recently the police has interrogated him and said that we found your DNA evidence in the Hwa Sung murder victim. He first had denied this but recently, the last Tuesday, he had admitted that he was the Hwasong killer. Now, the crazy thing is that he right now has admitted to 14 murders, not just in the Hwasong Shi, but he's known to have four other murder victims. Thing that just kind of makes a lot of people angry is that he will not be prosecuted for any of the crimes that he did, especially in the Hwasong area. He's already serving a life sentence, and unfortunately, after the statute of limitation has expired, you cannot prosecute someone for the crimes. Even if he has confessed. Yes, I know it is crazy and makes everybody's blood boil the fact that he has done such cruel things to these victims. It doesn't matter how long ago. The fact that he has killed these young and even older grandmother victims. I mean, it is crazy how he just will not be prosecuted. Also, a cool thing is recently they brought back that bus driver helper. Unfortunately, the bus driver passed away so he could not come in for questioning, but they did question that bus driver helper. So in order to get more evidence and point out the suspect, they did put her into a hypnosis status where apparently with hypnosis, you could take someone's memory back like 20, 30 years ago and show them the clear image of what has happened. So in this hypnosis status, she was actually able to point out the suspect. So she did point out Yi Tun Jae in this hypnosis status, which is crazy to me, which I didn't even know hypnosis really works, but apparently it does. Now hypnosis evidence cannot be used in court, but it's revealed that a lot of police actually use this method in order to help them with the case. Now, if you guys know anything about hypnosis or if you guys have ever been into any hypnosis stat sessions, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear something about hypnosis. So the investigators that worked in the crime back in the 
deputies, they say that they could sleep a little bit easier at night just because they know that the suspect is in jail and they now know who has done it. Now it does kill everyone when you don't know what has happened, who is the suspect, because you never know. They could be run out on the loose doing this to more victims. So they do want to catch the suspect. They do want to know what has happened and close the case finally. Now unfortunately, there are still 268 unsolved long-term murder cases. This is crazy. And I really hope that DNA technology now can solve some of these cases and really put down the crime level to zero, hopefully, one day. Now my heart just goes out to the victims and their families. I cannot just imagine going 30 plus years not knowing what happened to your family member. That is just crazy. And so thank you guys, you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know what you guys have thought about this case and let me know if there's anything you guys wanna see this month. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, this is Crazy Grace, and you are invited to join me at my new digital fan club on Popbase. On the Popbase app, you can play with exclusive content I created, compete for rewards, and win collectibles in an experience hosted by Digital Me. Our creator community grows fast with daily content drops to keep you busy. You can download the app on the app stores or by clicking on the links below on your mobile device. So what are you guys waiting for? See you on Popbase.